Happy Sunday to you. I am Steve Collins. I'm going to be bringing the message today, and I'm just delighted that you're here uh, joining us online. And so let's talk a little bit about the service. We're going to worship together. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to pray together. We're going to be the people of God. We're going to hear from the Word of God. And so a little bit about the, the sermon. We're going to talk about uh, landmarks, right? You don't hear that a lot in a sermon, but, but just hang with me. Hang with me. We're going to talk about landmarks. We're going to talk about leaving a legacy uh, for our children and their children, and uh, leaving a legacy of faith. So I uh, hope you'll stick around. Um, let's actually open our, our time together with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for, uh, for this day, for this time, God. Uh, be with us. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Allow us to get rid of all the distractions, God, that are just, on a, you know, that get in the way of, uh, of focusing on you. Be with us during this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Who 
It is good to be here. Um, I'm just going to get some of the questions out of the way at the beginning. Uh, my folks are doing wonderful. Thank you for asking, uh, even though it's online. Uh, Dad is doing real well since retirement. Uh, he started walking a lot. He's lost 50 pounds. Uh, Mom is doing great. Um, she's doing well at home. Of course, my father is driving her crazy, but you know what? That was to be expected. So they're doing really well. Um, but you know what, speaking of my mom, I'm just going to open with an illustration about my parents because that's what I learned from my father. Just use an illustration about one of your family members. It plays all the time. So here you go. Let's talk about my mom. My mom is a really, really hard person to buy a present for. Uh, it's, it's always a challenge. Mother's Day, birthday, Christmas, all these things. She's hard to buy for. So a couple months back with Christmas approaching, I had this idea for a wonderful idea for, for a present. And... Uh, her mother, my grandmother, 
uh, ran and operated a store in the late 80s, early 90s, like a quilting fabric uh, craft store and called Calico Country. And when she opened it, uh, the store, the ribbon cutting got featured in uh, the local newspaper, a very small town, small town newspaper got featured. And I thought, you know what, I haven't seen that paper, but if I, if I found it, like framed it or something, you know, it would look really nice. That would make a really nice present for my mom. So, you know, being resolute with my idea, I'm like, let's do this. So um, I first, I call around, um, I ask my dad, hey dad, have you seen this thing? He goes, yeah, yeah, I remember it. Don't have it, but I remember it. It was like the front page, big deal, you know, small town newspaper. Um, but no, we don't have it. So, okay. So I call her sisters, my aunts. And I said, hey, you got this paper? And they're like, no, we definitely remember it. I said, do you know when? Like, give me a ballpark, what age, what year, what month, all this stuff. Eh, somewhere in this decade. Um, so I'm like, okay, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I began to reach out. I reached out to the newspaper, right? Because who, who else would have the newspaper? And I said, hey, looking for old newspapers from like the late 80s. You got anything? And they said, no. I was like, what do you mean, no? Like, don't you guys keep at least one copy, you know, in paper or digital of everything from your newspapers, from your history? No. Okay, so that is unfortunate. Um, so I called um, the Chamber of Commerce for Dinuba, the small town. I said, hey, can you give me like an era, a date? You guys have records on businesses. And they said, yes, we can help you. But they didn't. They didn't actually help me. Um, so I got no from... Um, the family didn't know. The family didn't have it. The Chamber of Commerce didn't have it. Uh, the newspaper didn't have it. So I, I was actually running out of hope here. And I said, oh no. So I called the library. And I said, library, you have old newspapers. And they said, yes, we do. And they're on the microfilm. But it's closed right now due to the pandemic. You can't have it. And I said, well, and plus I didn't know really when. Uh, I was like, could you look at microfilm for like maybe a five-year period of time and just look for a cover story featuring, you know, that's a really hard ask of strangers. So day after day, weeks, months of searching, I kept encountering these roadblocks and I can't tell you the number of people that told me it's impossible, this doesn't exist, you can't have it, sorry, all very nice, very polite, but roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And then one day I got a call from a gentleman who told me, I'm from the Tuolumne County District Library, something I've never heard of. He said, I got your request from these people. We have it. You were two years off in your estimate. It's right here. And he emailed me uh, the story. And we're going to put it up on the screen right now so you can take a look at it. Look at the hard work that paid off. And so here it is. That's, um, that's my grandma right there in the middle doing the ribbon cutting. That's my great grandma. Uh, my mom's uh, sister, my aunt is off to the side there. And Obviously, it made a wonderful present. I got a great frame for it. My mom cried. There's always a little competition between, you know, my father, my brother, and I. Who can pick the best present for my mom? Who can make her cry? The happy cry. Um, by the way, that year I won. Yes, I did. So, of course, they're not here to actually refute that. So, that, <laughs> one point for me. Um, and so, it's framed. It's in a lovely place in their house. Uh, and she enjoys it. But more than that, what it serves... For me, is a reminder when I walk past it, I, I look at it and I'm like, oh, it's a nice present. But more than that, it's a reminder of a certain level of perseverance that uh, a monument, if you will, that I had to struggle and be told no and no and no, and it's impossible and it's not out there and I'm sorry, just it's not going to happen. And it serves when I walk past if I'm feeling defeated or... Um, Maybe like things aren't going my way, either at work or at home or wherever in the world. It serves as a reminder that, you know what, once upon a time, this little idea of a present you'd heard was impossible. And yet here it stands. And, um, you know, my son was struggling with something and thinking something else also was impossible. And we were actually going for a walk and we were passing near my parents' house. And I stopped him. I said, we're going inside. So we went inside. And I stood him in front of that thing and I said, you see this? And he's like, yes, dad, I know you tried months and months and months to find this. And here it is. And I was like, but seriously, learn, learn the lesson here, my son. Perseverance, being relentless, right? If you were with us for TJ Friday, you're going to recognize that word. Uh, it, it can pay off. Uh, but it serves as that reminder for me, hopefully for the family, for hopefully generations to come. Because it was so hard to get. 
But you know, this happened uh, in the Bible as well. Uh, the people of God would erect these monuments to serve as a reminder for future generations. Um, we're going to read one of those passages, and uh, we're going to dive in. So we're going to be uh, in the book of Joshua, in the fourth chapter. Okay, so go ahead and get your Bibles. Joshua chapter 4. While you're doing that, we're going to talk about Joshua chapter 3. Okay, so we are just one generation away from Moses passing away. Uh, the torch has been passed from Moses to Joshua. And Joshua is leading the people now towards Jericho, right? They are approaching to enter the promised land and to take possession of it. But um, they got to get through the Jordan. And do you remember as Moses led the people a generation before, out of Egypt, they came to another body of water, the Red Sea. And Moses, with God's help, God's power, with the staff, holds it up, the sea parts, and they cross through on dry land. So now here they are, one generation later, with the Jordan between them and their goal. Um, so once again, uh, Joshua looks at the people and says, Hey, consecrate yourselves, right? Prepare yourselves in a holy fashion. Because you're going to see God do something amazing. And so they do, and they have the ark out. And they, they begin to cross, and the water gets stopped up, and they cross through dry land as well. Um, and we're going to pick it up, Joshua chapter 4, verse 1. Okay, read along with me. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So you get this? They're crossing. They're basically crossed. And as they do, he's like, pick 12 guys, one from each tribe. Go into the middle of the Jordan, right? That's where the water's supposed to be, right? That's where the water is supposed to be, but God has stopped it up. He says, go get stones. These are big stones. You know how you know? Because they're supposed to be carrying them on their shoulder. If they were just little, little itty-bitty stones, you wouldn't need your shoulder. So they go and get them, and they're supposed to carry them out of the Jordan into the place where they stayed tonight. Verse 4. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe. And he said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites. Here we go, verse 6. To serve as a sign among you, right? Here we are picking up gigantic stones and carrying them. Why? Like, really, why? But God tells them why. To serve as a sign among you. Here we go. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Verse 7, tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So you see, they went and gathered these stones, and then they, they stacked them up in some, I'm sure, fashionable way, and they create this little monument. And the purpose of it wasn't just to get some exercise. It was so that in future generations, when they're walking past this spot, and people see this pile of 12 rocks, be like, huh, that's weird. What, 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 what Mom, Dad, what, what is that? And it's for the adults to remember, and it's for them to teach their children and their children's children. And they can look at them and say, this is where... We came to take possession of the promised land. And God stopped the Jordan. You see, a generation before, they had already heard those stories. Some of them may have actually crossed the Red Sea. You know, younger, obviously, 40 years younger. So for one generation, Moses leading out of slavery, out of Egypt, towards the promised land, God stops the water at the Red Sea. And here they are to serve as a reminder that during a challenging time, during a challenging season, God still shows up. So this kind of got me thinking. Hang with me here. 
as I look around the world, the church, non-believers, I see a lot of fear. I see a lot of anxiety. I see a lot of worry. I thought about that for a while. And I have a question I want you to really reflect on and think. Could it be that the Lord is not our refuge? Could it be that the God who stopped the Jordan, the God who stopped the Red Sea, the God that closed the mouth of the lions, the God that stopped the fire from devouring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the God that gets out of the grave after three days, when troubles come to us, when the world is not exactly super friendly right now to Christians, could it be our fear, our anxieties, our worry? Could it be that God is not our refuge, not who we're turning to? You know, um, my Bible obviously is right here. I'll just tell you right now, I peeked at the end. God wins. We win. I know it doesn't look like it right now. But at the end of this, the trumpet will blow. And we will look up and we will see the Lord our God. So in the Bible, they use these stones. And this was not the only time they did this. They did this a lot. They build these monuments to remind them of moments where God did show up. We have mon uh, monuments and landmarks that we use. I'm going to put one up on the screen right now. We don't always refer to them like that. But if you look at this picture, the cross, that in a, in a way is a monument. Why? Because it serves as a reminder. It's a weird, weird reminder. Go back and think of what the cross represents. It is a style of Roman execution. It is bizarre that that has become you know, the symbol for Christianity of the faith. But it's not because of the Roman-style execution. It's because of what happened there. It serves as a reminder so that when someone says, what is that? Not costume jewelry, not where we put it on everything. But what is, what is, what, what is that? What is the cross? That's where Jesus conquered sin and death. It serves as a reminder for you, for me, for our children. You know, the Israelites were trapped on the other side of the Jordan. But then, God. You and I were dead in our sins. But then, God. I want you to remember, in closing, remember who you are. Remember who your God is. Allow your fears to melt away as you look at the monuments and the landmarks that are left for you, the cross, to remind you of who you can take your refuge in, God our Father. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count the loss and poor
bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. And over wonderful cross, over wonderful cross, all who gather here by grace shall near and bless your Your name. May you go forward from this Sunday on, remembering 